All right, this is going to be lab six, and the course schedule said this is online password breaking, but it's not. That's going to be lab seven. I swapped the two. I actually swapped them in the fall and just didn't write it down correctly, but I already got the module up there for this week. And if you go down, you'll see lab six, and you'll also see lab seven up there. Um, I put the recording up for lab seven and solved this up there, but... Um, last year's recordings up there. This is the network scanning lab, and I already got the file you're going to be using. Okay, uh, the midterms up there. Okay, midterm opens on the tenth, I think, and it's due on the sixteenth, something like that. Okay, the midterm. The instructions say download the seven zip file from the midterm before starting the exam. Download the seven zip file before. You, know, you get my my hint there. Because you need that file to answer the test. And the test is timed, so if you don't download this file and get it all on password protected and everything before you start, you're going to have an issue. Okay. And I give it the MD5 hash if you want to verify it. I didn't screw it up to screw with you at all. So if you get something weird, <laughs> that shouldn't be there. Okay. But the, um, the file is right here. There's the midterm 7-zip file. You do not have 7-zip, you need to get it. It's a very handy. You go to 7-zip.org, it's also on the instructions for the exam. Download it. It works on Windows, works on Mac, works on Linux, works on everything. Okay. What it is, it pretty much handles all archive types. And it does better. I even put a link on here. To, use, to, to open the file, you can get it from 7-zip.org right there. Okay. 7-zip.org. Is it already, already on the computers up It's already on the computers upstairs. Okay. It, it works really good. Because it can pretty much, like even my Camtasia recordings, it senses that as an archived format and will automatically extract. So it's really nice. It does everything. So if you haven't used it, I do recommend you use it. Okay. But... Um, so download the file, make sure you can, I mean, obviously you don't have the password yet, but make sure when you try to open it, ask for a password. Make sure that 7-zip installed, that way you can, when you, and the last two questions are what you need it for. It's only the last two questions. So and it happens to pertain to tonight's lecture. All right, about the test, every project you've done so far has questions on there. There's... Some. I don't remember how many. <laughs> You're just going to be answering questions. You're not actually going to be like cracking stuff and doing this. You'll be doing a couple basic things. You have 28 minutes for this, so it's 14 questions. Oh. So they're not, they're not long. If you did the project, like if you know how to use a hex editor, and you can look at a hex and tell me what type of file it is, you can answer in two seconds. But if you're getting like, oh, crap, I don't know what type of file that is, and it was one you used. So if you don't have a clue how to look at hex data and tell me what type of file it is, maybe look at Gary's page or like have your prior notes available. Say, ooh, that one, I'm, that's such and such a type of file. That's what's on it. Okay? John the Ripper, I say, what type of, what, you know, I want to make this word into this word. What do I do? What happens if I type this? That kind of stuff. Yes? You know openwall.com? Mm -hmm. I wasn't able to, like, open it. It's actually openwall.org. Yeah, it was down or something. You had to go find the catch well, Really? Down. Yeah, it was up and down. Oh. Maybe someone broke his password. <laughs> it's open now. <laughs> oh. Well, that's why you don't wait till the last day. Yeah, I needed it. You work on it. <laughs> okay. But every project, like the email, I give you an email header. I ask you one specific question from that email header. Okay? That kind of stuff. So it's exactly things you positively did in the projects. If you did the projects. I mean, if you didn't do the project, obviously, skip that question and move on. So it's exactly the same thing you did. Just, well, I won't say exactly. I mean, I'm not making you break a password. But I'm just checking. Can you tell me if I want to put a S at the end of a word? What rule would I use? I want to make frog into R-O-G-F, that kind of stuff. Mm, okay. okay. <laughs> just, just that kind of stuff is all I'm looking for. 45 minutes? What? 28 minutes. 
So if you know the labs, if you got them ready, you've got them all saved right there, and you see a question on down the rip, you can open up your, because you can get all the answers out of the stuff you did for the most part. Email tracking, know which websites. Because I give you something you need to do just like you did. Take this information and find out a specific piece of information. Okay, that's all it is. Um, and the whole point of the short time limit is if I give you enough time, you can look it all up and uh, call your buddy and... <laughs> no. Okay. They're going to be able to, like, say if you hung up on a question and can you go back? Yeah, you can see all of them. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not doing one at a time. No, you can see the entire test. Just scroll down, answer the ones you can. And the last two are based on tonight's lecture. Or maybe it's the last three. I know it's the last two for sure. So make sure you can open that file. Make sure you have 7-zip installed. Make sure when you try to open it, ask for a password. And the very first question, I give you the password. You don't have to decrypt it. It's all right there. It says, password is this. That way you can open the file at that point. Okay? Um, you have until the 16th, which is Sunday. In the past, I would give people through spring break. But then I found out people waited to the very end of spring break on a Sunday when they're supposed to be on vacation. So I said, you know, let's get them before spring break. Then we move on to something new. Okay? Sound like a plan? Now that I just gave away all the answers, Kelly shows up. Okay. I did talk about the test, Kelly, but I did record the entire thing. Hey, Ted. I'm going on vacation the week before spring break. Well, then you're going to have to do it on vacation. You know, I had a, I had a student email me once saying... I'm sorry, I can't do my homework. I'm on a cruise ship. <laughs> so I reply back, oh, I'm on a cruise ship answering your homework. Do your homework. So, <laughs> never heard another word. So I don't care where you go, there's internet. There's now, maybe if you're like Sahara Desert or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so that's where your test is. You, it's like the 10th through the 16th. i give you a time period on there. Download the 7-zip file. Read the information sheet. It's really short. And then take the test. Okay, it's pretty simple. Um, lab six. Let's talk about lab six now. Okay. All right. Lab six is network scanning. The schedule had a different. I, I swapped two of the labs around. And all right. Come on. There's a question on there about steganography, that kind of stuff. There's a question on file recovery. So, as long as you know what you did, you're, you're good. All right, to gain an understanding of how to monitor network traffic. I don't know if you all realize this at this point, pretty much everything is network based. Everything's getting that way. Okay. Um, I don't know if you got a, it's also available on Android, but there's an app out there called AnyList. Anyone ever heard of that app? Someone told me about it. Oh my God, it's the best app in the world. Okay, what's cool about it is you can make lists, like shopping list. Okay, I have one for the commissary, one for the BX, one for the shop at, and my wife can have one on her phone, and if I and we can share the list. So if she adds something to the list, I know about it immediately. And then and the moment she buys that item or you know, checks it off, it automatically disappears off my list. So it's the heinous thing. Like if you're at home, ooh, I just used the last can of mushroom soup. You can put it right in there. You want to go to the grocery store, it's got mushroom soup. And it synchronizes between whoever you're sharing the list with. But my point is, everything's going to be network based before long. Everything. So, is it scary? I, oh, by the way, any list is free. Unless you want the pro version. It's always a pro version. It costs like nine bucks a year. The only difference is the pro version, you can attach pictures. And the pictures synchronize. Well, what's nice about it is, like, uh, Virginia's sister in Tennessee. Her daughter has EEOG. Basically, she's allergic to everything. And literally her esophagus flares up where she can't even you know, eat or drink. So she has to have certain types of foods. And there's a certain type of flour that she can only find at Bifrolase. So she would take a picture of it and say, hey, can you go buy this for me? And it was very handy to be able to take, you know, I was in Lowe's and I needed a specific bracket. I had a picture of the bracket. I'm like, okay, which bracket is it? <laughs> so that's why it's kind of handy. The point is, everything is going to become network based before long. I don't know what's not going to be. So, all right. So you have a network capture, which I'm going to supply to you. It's up there on the page. Download the network capture, and it says using Wireshark or any other type of network monitor you like. It's up to you. Now there are a lot of network monitors out there that you can literally take your PCAT file and import it, automatically extract all the documents, all the, everything from it. Network 
uh, no, there's a bunch of, I, there was one I used when I was in um, St. Louis. It's kind of cool, because you could tell it only capture graphics. And you could hit start. And it literally would just, every graphic you found on the network would dump it to your hard drive. It's kind of scary how well they work. Because you start surfing the web, and instantly every graphic appears in a folder on your hard drive. So there's a lot of them that are all free. Well, most of them are free. But Wireshark is all you need for this one. Okay. So you just Google network monitoring? Yeah. But it's, it's, there's, it's like file grabber or something like that. But literally, it's like Wireshark, but whatever type of file, say you want Word documents. Select it and just hit go, and every Word document that appears ends up on your hard drive. Are any of these on our, like our Kelly machine? Or? I don't know. I, I don't remember the name of the darn thing. I, I just, how Wireshark we, is all you need for this project. How can we download it on the Kelly? What is, the, what is a Kelly machine? I saw that. Kelly is like, like Backtrack. It's a tool made for penetration testing and forensics. It's an open source Linux tool that's got all the tools installed in it. It might already be on there. I don't know. Yeah. And you use the command apt get apt get with basically application get. And it downloads kind of like a directory list thing, and then you can go and select the ones you want and install. It downloads them off of what? Off the Kali update server. Wow, really? Yeah. Nice. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty nice. App get is what you need. Or just type this really cool website called Google. <laughs> type in <laughs> install application on Kali. It's going to say app get. Yeah, it's, that's pretty simple. Okay. So use Wireshark or some sort of network monitor to analyze the capture I'm going to give you. Determine the source and destination and any other information that can be of use in a court of law. Recover any sort of information that can be from the traffic to aid in the investigation. In other words, just tell me what you found is what I'm really looking for. This IP connected to this IP and did this. I saw this specific kind of traffic and it looked like they were doing this. That kind of stuff. Okay? Just tell me what you found, where you found it. Be sure to include things like packet numbers, IP addresses, what type of traffic it was. If you extract anything, that's fine. You can include it as a screenshot. Okay. Um, I'm not going to demo it on the actual capture this year. I did last year. But this year I'm not. Actually, uh, let me, okay, we'll look at this one. Well, no, let me start a new one first. I'm going to start, I'm in Wireshark. I just installed Wireshark, okay? If you go up Capture and go to Interfaces, the reason, see, you could just click Capture and Start, but depending on how many interfaces you will have on your machine, you don't know where to start. Like I have two here. You want to go to the one where the numbers are going up. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say start. And what this is doing is now capturing live data on the network. Okay? And for some reason, it, there it is. Okay. Now, you all agree I'm not really doing anything on the computer right now, but I'm still getting traffic. I'm getting a lot of broadcast traffic. Okay? I can do, like say I'm going to go over here and... Uh, Let's, uh, let's go to John Open Wall, whatever. Just clicking something over here. Just clicking a couple different items here. And you'll see I'm getting all kinds of different colored traffic now. Okay. What is the black? Um, I don't know exactly what that number is. It's a portion of the TCP connection. I don't. They keep changing the colors on it. In the past, it had no color on it. If I, if I go to msn.com, I should be getting all kinds of traffic. So. Okay, just lots of stuff. Then you can hit stop, and what it does is all that traffic is now in a file, a PCAP file, which stands for packet capture, I think, pretty sure. Okay. You can analyze it. Okay. You can take this, this up a little bit now. Well, shit. Those of you who have been pen testing have been doing this for a couple projects, here, and for some reason I can't move this stupid bar up. Well, that's Grab not... Oh, uh, there it is. All right. Now, I'm going to pick like an ARP packet here. Address resolution protocol. Okay. You can open these up. Like the frame is not so much important. What you really want is the Ethernet 2 area. You can see the source and destination. Okay. They're really MAC addresses at this point. But let's pick a TCP packet. Here, let's find a TCP. There's a TCP. Okay, there's a TCP packet. Here you can see the source and destination. Under IP, you'll actually be able to see the IP address. There's the source and the destination IP addresses. Everybody see that? Okay. 
and you can click on different things and at the bottom it'll highlight like IP addresses are right there okay there's the header or the version there's the header link all different areas it automatically highlights each one see how at the bottom it changes okay like under TCP you can see the port now down at the bottom this is hexadecimal down here okay like up at the top this is telling you port 443 down here is 01 BB well 01 BB in hex ends up being 443 in decimal Okay, so I'm not overly worried about that, but I want you to just search through the traffic to try to find stuff. Okay, um, now I'm going to close that out and open up the sample that I made earlier today. Now, if you already have the, the file downloaded, just click on it, it opens right up in there. Now, when you install Wireshark, it's going to give you the option to install a PCAP driver. Do not do that at work. Okay, what a PCAP driver does is it makes it so you can capture traffic. Your work will probably frown upon that. <laughs> so do not install the PCAP driver at work. You can do it at home. It'll work perfectly without the weak PCAP driver as long as you have the capture file, which I'm giving you. So you don't need the PCAP driver. Now, if you're doing it at home or something, that's a different story. Okay, it's kind of cool. You should install this at home and just capture traffic. Be amazed at what traffic's out there. Okay, so this is the capture I made a little while ago today, earlier today. Okay, you can basically see packet and number, include that in your report. Include the source and destination. Now, you see, it's pretty simple to see up here, okay? You can look through, there'll be all kinds of different traffic in here. Now, you can also search for things like um, FTP. Okay, I'm going to filter on FTP, and there's FTP traffic. Ever see how I did that? What I'm doing is I'm now filtering all for FTP. How many protocols should we be looking at? Right here. I mean, how many? <laughs> it's mainly TCP and FTP. Okay. That's all you're going to see. Now, like up here, you'll see I made a connection to an FTP server, and up here it's asking me for a username. Okay? And you see at the bottom here it even says user anonymous. See it down there? User anonymous. Okay? Then it's going to say, okay, password required for user. And here's the password, kenadhere.com. And what's cool about this, watch this, you can actually select a packet. If you right-hand click on it, you can say, follow TCP stream. And what that does is it takes that whole conversation from when I connected and everything and shows it all in one little place. Wow. See that? Isn't that kind of cool? So you can see I connected, asked me for the username, I gave them the password, then it shows some of the commands I did. I did a list, I did change working directory, I did another list, I did change working directory into download test, I did another list, I changed back a directory, then I changed it into licensed, then I did another list, then I changed it into licensed, then I changed it into antivirus. This is actually McAfee's website, by the way. I know it has a free open FTP. This one. We can't put stuff, you can download from it. So, from yep, I'll actually show you how I did that right now. I actually just brought up a command prompt. I did FTP, FTP.nai.com, Network Associates International. And I did anonymous. Okay, I just put in kenadhere.com. It's not valid, but it needs an email for a password. Okay. And then you can do LS for list and CD into license. And list again, you can change an antivirus. Antivirus. Change list again, change into dat files, do list again. LS is list, just like DIR in Windows. Okay. I'm just navigating around this website, is what I was doing with FTP. Definitely look at FTP traffic. Okay, that's one of the traffics on there. Okay. There's some mail traffic on there. You need to be looking at mail traffic. Okay. Let's um oh when I'm done here, I just type buy. It goes away. Now, now that I did the follow TCP stream, I'm kind of stuck because it's only showing me the packets pertaining to the TCP stream. You got to hit clear to get it back to normal so you can see everything. That's critical. I say if I went in here again, let me show you what I did again. Say if I did FTP, then I went over here and I did follow TCP stream. All I'm seeing is traffic that, oh, you can also export. You can export the hex dump. You can export 
there's the C arrays, the raw dump, you can export whatever you want. And so you add once to like, okay, we went to this, look at this stream and we saw this, this, and this. Right, I say on packet 459, made an FTP connection to this server. That kind of stuff. Okay. okay, and tell me it was from this IP to that IP, that kind of stuff. Okay. But after you filter a stream like this, that's all you're seeing is that one particular stream. Make sure you hit clear. Okay. Say I want to see um, TCP traffic. Okay. I can view only TCP traffic. Okay. Now SSL is also TCP. FTP is also TCP. So what if I want to do uh, AR ARP traffic? I can filter by ARP traffic. So you can filter by whatever you want. Okay. Um, you can also search. Here's something a lot of people don't know about. Say I go in here and I can do find, uh, find a packet. Now, you can do, I want to search by string. See, I know I logged in with Ken at here.com. Let's try to find that. So I'm going to tell it, search for the string Ken at here.com. Okay? And I want to search, we'll say, the packet details. It came up right with the packet. It's packet number 1225, this packet right here, where it asks for my password. Okay. See how I search for that specific string in there? So you can search for strings. You, so that is just really a pretty handy feature. Can you search just for the word pass? Okay. Yes, you can. Let's, um, if you don't know what the password is. Yes, you can. Um, find packet. Let's say we want to search for a pass. And it might find quite a few. The problem is the word pass is so short. Oh, here we go. This is in there's some text in here. This is a young Peruvian bear with a passion for all things British, travels to London, so on and so on. Okay. So you can and when you're searching, you can tell it to search. Let me go back in there. You can tell it to search the packet list, the packet details, the packet bytes, the packet whatever. I say I want to find a packet that has Oh, that's not going to be on there. Well, hell, that's not going to work. Um, can't do that example. I didn't record that type of packet. Um, but you can just search for all kinds of different things in here. So pretty handy. Um, after you've found some things, if you want me to tell you if you're on the right track and you got the majority of it, send it to me. So I found this, this, this. Is that pretty much it? And I'll tell you. Because there's a couple types of packets you should see in here. Not, not many types of packets, but... The traffic has some flow to it. There's something specific going on. You should be able to look at it and see. Do you all, this will do a really basic TCP IP whole thing, okay? Um, let's find regular TCP, not SSL. Come on, let's go down here. Okay, okay, okay. Well, the problem is I got too much traffic on this darn packet. Okay. Do y'all know what a three-way handshake is? Okay. Three-way handshake has a sin, synac, and then an act. Okay. Those are basically it's me saying, "Hey, Thomas, I want to talk to you," and then you know, "Oh okay, yeah, this is Thomas. I want to talk to you too." Then I say, "Good, let's talk." So it's basically a three-way handshake between the two. Okay. Um, that normally means that conversation is starting, and you can pick any of these. Like I'm going to go this one here. Well, I don't want to get it. So, so let's, you can do follow stream here, and that's not a paint packet stream. Oh, that was too darn short. Hold on. Let's see if I can find something a little bit bigger. Let's follow this stream. There we go. Okay, we got a packet here, and you can. This is probably a graphic or something. Oh, it's a gzip file, so it's something. Zip. Wow, it's huge. Wherever this thing is, it's very huge. Kind of looks like the hint I gave you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you could actually go to the hex dump. You could. Oh, that was a PNG. Yeah, it was. It was a PNG, so it was just like the hint I gave you. Somewhere in there it said PNG. John. So you can save it as raw and then take it to hex editor. Yes, you could. Right? Yes, you could. Mostly you must like extract the You picture. don't need to. I'm not worried about pictures, but there are some searches on here that might help you get in the right track. Like, uh, I don't know if I did any searches on this one here. Let me look here. I'm going to go edit, find, packet. I'm going to do a string of search. 
Okay. There you go. This somewhere on here, there's the word search. Oh, because I probably went to Yahoo or something. Okay. Search for like search. Search for login, stuff like that. Because I did login somewhere. You should actually even be able to find the, the account I logged in with. Will, uh, will um, passwords come up in that as a MD5 hash? Yes. Because, Can you take well, those okay. And put them into no, the whole point record. is okay, there's a difference between TCP and SSL. Okay, SSL is also on TCP. Regular hypertext HTTP traffic is not encrypted. That's why when I connected to that FTP site, it wasn't encrypted. We could read it. But when I, there's a lot of SSL traffic on here. There's SSL v3. Under right, there's a whole bunch of it. That's what's happening is because I got Canvas up in the background, I got my. Google account up in the background, and they're always synchronizing the stuff. So that traffic, you're not going to be able to read the username or password. But for what you guys need to do, you can read it. I'm not sure about the password, but at least the username. Okay. So don't try to crack any passwords? If, if they are, they're just bogus ones. Probably tests or something anyway. Something I came across was pretty neat, because you could look at like the top 10 source Top 10 uh, where do you do that? In analyze or statistics? Uh, I think it was analyze. <clears throat> Let's see, file stream. There's a lot of functionality on this tool. And on display filter. Should be under statistics, I would think. That's right, the protocol hierarchy. Oh, there you go. I'll tell you, so we're having. Different, well, again, this is only a quick sample I made. It, the word, when I made the other one, it doesn't have so much background. It doesn't have as much broadcast traffic, so it's not quite so much crap to look like. You can see we did some basic FTP search. If you don't see it. Capture filters. I would think analyze. Conversation list, let's see. Well, you can play around with it, but definitely there's FTP traffic on there. There's definitely a bunch of traffic that you should be able to look at and say, hey, something's happening. Okay. Look for some login traffic, that kind of stuff. Okay. And so if you, now as long as you don't wait till Tuesday at 4.45, Send me what you got, and I'll take you. You know, email me. Just what you found, and I'll tell you if you pretty much got all. Of it. You don't need to send me your whole thing. But, okay. And by the way, if you if you send me an email to my Rose address, it's much easier for me to track it. Oh, Finding good. an email I send you through Canvas is very difficult. Okay. Yeah. It is. I was trying to find one today. Those of you who've been pen testing, how I sent you your hints. Somebody said they never got it. Well, I printed it. It was in there. It just took me forever to find the darn thing, and. Obviously, Canvas has an issue sending PNG files. <laughs> you know? Okay, so it's not a tough lab, but you're going to do the same darn thing on the test. So make sure you play around with this stuff. Make sure you know how to search for stuff. Make sure I didn't make create filters because you got to answer a couple questions. Okay, and the cool thing is, if you do good enough up good enough on this lab, you won't even need the, you know. Well, it'll be easier for you on the test, but that way. You'll know exactly how to answer the questions based on how you do the project. Okay. So, is this would this be a good exam to do, Proctor? It can. Oh, that's a good point. Um, one of your exams has to be Proctor. If you want to take the test up in two hundred one, room two hundred one, it's open basically from eight in the morning till nine p or nine forty five p.m. every day, nine to two on Saturday, and if you want to take it. Times other than that, let me know and I can have security let you in there. I'll just send them a list of my students and say, hey, if these guys show up, let them in there. But if you take it in room 201, there's cameras in there. Then just tell me, hey, this is Brandon. I took the test Wednesday at 8 p.m. Done. The whole point of the proctoring is not, you know, it's open book, open notes, open internet. I just want to make sure it's Kelly taking the test. What time is it open? It's open from 8 a.m to 9.45 p.m. Monday through Thursday. 8 to like 6 on Friday, 9 to 2 on Saturday. 
Now, if it's locked, go to room 208 and have them open it for you. And um, I can have security let you in. I'll give you my cell phone number. That doesn't mean I want a bunch of spam now. <laughs> my cell phone number is 590-3461. And if you're up here at a different time and you can't get in, call security. Or call, actually call me, then I'll call security for you. But I, the security's number is 733-7313. And they'll let you in. I do it all the time. I call and say, hey, so-and-so needs in the business building. And they'll let you in the building, they'll let you in the lab. But I just, the cameras are in there. So just tell me I was here taking the test, and I can pull up the camera real quick. It records for two weeks, so I should be good. <coughs> We're just trying to make sure there's really someone taking the test that's supposed to be taking the test. So you just want one test part, so this one I don't have to go for. No, you can do the last test if you want. Either one. It's up to you. Um, now, I will tell you. This test requires no special software. The final test requires end case, requires FTK, that kind of stuff. So if you don't want to worry about that stuff working on your home computer, it might be a better idea to get the final proctor. Because do it up in the lab that has all the software already installed. So it's up to you. This one is really hex editor, Wireshark, about it. John the Ripper. But again, if you know how to, like, if you know how to use John the Ripper really well, you do not even have to test it. So I'm going to ask you something, and you can tell me what's the output. And you should know. Hey, what does a squiggly brace do? Which is not the question. <laughs> the point was, if there was a squiggly brace, you should know that's, is that, um, yeah, yeah, the, the wrap, wrap, wrap. Yeah. what do you call it? Revert. <laughs> it's not revert. It's, no, it's uh, rotate. It's rotate. Rotate, there yeah, you go. Rotate. I couldn't think of the word. Yeah. But if I was to say, hey, what command does this, or something like that, you should be able to say, oh, that's the <laughs> rotate command. So as long as you know what you did on the project, you'll be fine. Yes? Can you show us the command you used to search for that triple substitution? Search for one? The, the rules. The, the rules. Oh, yeah. Um, I need to stop the recording first. But any other questions on, on this lab, then I'll stop and show it, because I did show it earlier. I just don't need that stuff recorded. Yeah. I don't need the entire world. Here's the projects he used. So any other questions on the test or on lab six? So this is due Tuesday, but you can start the exam on Monday. Do this project first. <laughs> oh my God, you have to. If you don't, you're going to be like, damn it, I'm an idiot. I should have listened. Okay? All right, let me stop this recording.